Him as greater. See that obstacle as a little pebble. See it as a tiny piece of gravel. Hallelujah. It's not that big compared to our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, let's welcome uh, Faileen Sparks uh, to the front. She's going to be ministering to us. Let's, yeah, praise God. Mm. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Les. Awesome to be here again. Thank you so much. Okay, so. Praise the Lord. Wow. You guys must be keen back in the house of God today. Praise God. Amen. It's a great day to be alive. I'm so looking forward to hearing Pastor. Excuse me, I've got a lozenge in my mouth. If I, if I choke it, I just so fun. Pastor Lindy, it was great to meet you. I'm looking forward to next session and um, praise the Lord. I just want to pray for some people before we get into the word. Um, could I pray for you guys? Yeah. In fact, this... Is this your whole family? Yes. All of the all of the children? Yes. Wow, praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for this precious family. The Lord says, the sky's the limits. The Lord says, I'm breaking off um, even the glass ceiling that's been over your lives. For the Lord says, um, not only will no weapon formed against you will prosper, but nothing will stand before you all the days of your life. The Lord says to you, son, I've called you to be a Joshua and everywhere the sole of your foot treads, I'm going to give it to you. And there's a new treading anointing. And God says, you're going to outrun the chariots of Ahab. You're going to outrun the things that have tried to daunt you, that have tried to nip at your heels. The Lord says, you're going to look for those things that have contended with you. You won't even be able to find them for I'm bringing you forth even into a large and prosperous place and I'm bringing a supernatural mantle of prosperity over over your lives and God says even as I've um, pl placed man and a woman in a garden I'm I'm restoring uh, mankind back to the garden and beyond so the Lord says this is your garden season for I'm I'm not only crowning this year with favor but the Lord says that that um, I'm a restorer of the breach and a a, a a restorer of streets to dwell upon so the Lord says no this day I'm going to make a way even where it seems like there hasn't been a way God says there's, there's going to be such a way forward and uh, even as you are forward moving Christians I see that in Psalm 84 there's whose hearts are set upon pilgrimage so God says no this day I'm lifting you up to see a fresh vision to see a fresh perspective for I've gone before you to make the crooked places straight and the Lord says daughter you're going to see the travail of your soul and be satisfied God says I'm causing you not only to be an overcomer to be and not only to be a joyful mother of many but the Lord says um, you're, you're a Proverbs 31 woman and one whose price is far above rubies. For I have 60 queens and 80 concubines and virgins without number. But you, my fair one, has dove's eyes. And I love even most the tenderness of your heart towards me. So the Lord says, get ready to see that I'm opening up the windows of heaven. I'm opening up a new way. I'm opening up a new season. And God says, this is a day of new beginnings. So God says, forget the former things. For behold, I'm doing a new thing. And it will break forth speedily. And it's going to be for you and your whole household. You and your whole household will be blessed in a new way. And yes, God says, I'm going to give you a bigger house, a bigger home. And God says, there's going to be room to move. For in me, you'll live and move and have your very being. And God says, in me are all the promises of God that are yes and amen. So the Lord says, you're going to see a wide open and effectual door. I'm opening up the double doors the double doors of harvest and the winter is over. The winter is over. The lean, mean years are over and the years of plenty are breaking forward. So the Lord says, get ready to um, move into a new place. For even though circumstances have ridden over your head, yet I will bring you forth into a large and prosperous place. For I'm the God of great abundance. Own the cattle on a thousand hills. There's no, there's no lack in me. So trust me, for I'm going to bring supernatural blessing, supernatural breakthrough. There's even a, there are new areas that you're going to put your hand to. But the Lord says, um, uh, I'm causing the wealth of the wicked to come into the hands of the righteous. And there's supernatural breakthrough. See on this young man, the Lord says that you're a Timothy in the house. The one I'm training up. And even as Timothy, it was said that uh, your, the faith of your grandmother, the faith of your mother, there's a generational anointing over your life. And 
Lord says, I've called you to the kingdom, even to be a man of faith, to be a young man at a young age that will serve the Lord. Father, I thank you for these precious ones. I just see over this one, the Lord says, an Israelite indeed in whom there's no guile. There's a great love for the truth. And the spirit of truth is mightily upon your life. And I see, I see the finger of God writing the word of God upon your heart. You will be a living, living epistle read of others. And you'll be a carrier of my, of my divine promises, a carrier of my divine nature. And you'll also be even one who'll carry the gospel even to many places and many lands. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this whole household of, of favour. And I thank you that this is a new season of gathering. God says, I'm gathering you into a new place of knowing the blessings of the Lord. Make rich and add no sorrow, says God. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, young man. Thank you, Lord. I'd like to pray for um, uh, my friend here. Can I pray for you? The Lord says, I've called you from your mother's womb and I planned for you in love before the foundation of the earth. The Lord says, know that your name is engraved upon my hand. Can a nursing mother forget her child? Yet I could not forget you. God says that uh, even now I am bringing you forth in a new way. And God says, I'm opening up your eyes to see. There are many more things that are for you than anything that stands against you. For I have put even those fiery chariots of angels round about you, angels on assignment, and even the things you've been praying for, just as Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed. And there was a contending, a contending, and there's been a time of contending. And even though the, the enemy has come against you one way, he will flee several different ways. For you are under the shadow of the Almighty. And the secret place is our place, says the Lord. In Psalms uh, 25, 14, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and reverence him and to them he will reveal his covenant. God says you're going to be a covenant woman. You're going to understand covenant and you're going to know I'm a covenant keeping God. So the Lord says I'm bringing you even forth out of Lodabar, even out of um, like Mephibosheth came out of out of the desert, out of the wilderness and uh, came and sat at the table of the king. And the Lord says even as as much was restored to Mephibosheth, the inheritance, the um, blessing, everything that was lost at the fall, I'm restoring to you, says God. So I'm making you the head and not the tail above, only and not beneath. For you are a royal daughter of the king. And so this day I've sealed you with the seal of my ring. And even as Esther came forth with the authority and the boldness of the call of God. There's a spirit of boldness that's coming over about, over your life. And I just, I just hear you say, I've been with the Lord and this is what he's shown me. But there's a prophetic call upon your life, even to bring forth songs of deliverance, songs of breakthrough. So the Lord says, even now, you're going to find that there is a new door opening up before you, a door of hope, a door of hope for where it's been difficult, where it's been laborious. I'm releasing a Kairos season of God intervening, Holy Ghost releasing, breakthrough. So go through that door. It's a, it's a door of hope. And even the things you've been asking, seeking and knocking, the door is being opened unto you, says the Lord. So ask so that you might receive, that your joy would be full. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills will break forth into singing a new song. So the Lord says, I've put within your heart even the songs of Zion. I've put within your heart even the ways of Zion. For many knew the acts of God, but few knew the ways of God. And you're going to be a woman of the ways of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'd love to pray for Pastor Lindy before I know too much about her. <coughs> so, Father, thank you for this precious woman. The Lord says you are entering into a new era. You are entering into a new throne zone. And you're going to know the revelation even um, uh, in a new way. God says I'm causing you to have such a revelation of the times and seasons for the Issachar anointing, even to not only know the times and seasons, but what Israel ought to do, what, what the church ought to do. And God says, you're a teacher. And God says, you're a builder in life. You're a builder in truth. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. My people go backwards for lack of knowledge, but the truth sets them free. And I see you preparing materials even for Bible colleges and for training centers. And God says, there's much equipping 
that is um, going to flow through you. So the Lord says, the word of the Lord is coming to you a second time. And it's call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you haven't seen yet. And the Lord says, there's going to be doors of travel that will open up and you're going to find that I've saved the best wine till now and the best time till now. So get ready to rejoice for I'm going to give you a double portion of joy and you'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace and and uh and uh, and I know that um you know that there's a grace to an, an anointing to heal the sick and the Lord says there's going to be uh, even a multiplicity of that anointing and you're going to find um many uh, even whole companies of people are set free from many things so the Lord says daughter I know that um you, you're going to heal the brokenhearted and set captives free. And there is much, much fruitfulness ahead for you. So even through the times and seasons where it seems like um, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train, his glory filling the temple. God says you're entering into a new zone and it's all about the glory. And even as you said, Lord, show me your glory. And I'm putting you in the cleft of the rock. And this is a time of great encounters. And I will surround you with my goodness and my glory. And you will know that I have sent angels on assignment, ministering servants to the heirs of salvation. You're going to see angels. You're going to see me move in um, supernatural and unusual ways. So uh, even as you would walk with me into this new season, God says, I'm opening up. A new door. And there's a door standing open in heaven. I'm saying, come up here to this new place. Come up here. For I'm going to give you a revelation of the lion and the lamb. For the Lord says, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. The world is now going to hear the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Roaring over the church. Roaring breakthrough. Roaring, roaring freedom. So God says that uh, even in your heart, there's a new roar. But there's also a R-A-W, raw biblical faith that's going to stir the hearts of many. And it's going to be bringing people back to that raw biblical passion. And even as um, Paul said, I didn't come to, to you with eloquent words, but even with the, with the trembling lips and even to know nothing amongst you, but Jesus Christ and him crucified. So God says, you're going to bring such a revelation of the power of Calvary, the, the power of the cross, and the power of the blood of Jesus. So the Lord says, that get ready to see m multiple miracles, multiple breakthroughs in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, That's Pastor Lindy. Oh, confirmation. Thank you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. But I'd like you to open your Bibles this morning um, to um, the book of Romans. And uh, I want to just share um, this morning... Um, Praise the Lord. Just have to find it now. Praise God. Romans 8. Turn with me to Romans 8. Romans 8. We're going to read in verse 28. Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word brings light and it brings life. So today, let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And uh, touch our hearts and change our lives, Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 8. It says there, talking about prayer there. The Spirit helps our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we should ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we, will, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God. Praise God. I've been lo really loving the theme of the songs that have been coming through. And I really believe, as we were declaring last night, God's goodness, that we're going to see God's goodness being outpoured and being released in a mighty way. And it says there, to, um, together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. You know, it says there in uh, Romans 8, that God causes all things to work together for good, for those who are called according to his purposes. And we're also going to read in um, Ephesians chapter 1, 
It says, um, verse 10, for we are, oh, sorry, Ephesians 2 verse um, 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Um, Pastor, could you take the lid off that? I think they must have very strong, muscly men that screw those on so tight. <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, and I want us to just, just have a look at this word purpose, called to the purpose of God. And, uh, and uh, you know, a lot of times that's the question. In fact, they did a survey in universities all around the place. And the main question was, what, what's my purpose? What's my calling? What is my purpose? But I want us to have a look at the meaning of the word purpose in the Greek. In the Greek, it's the word prothesis, prothesis. The word thesis is story, dissertation, account, report of why, how something um, uh, is about the explanation of a subject or a person. And the word pro in the um, Greek is actually pre in the English. So in Psalm 139, it says, All my days you, fought, you wrote in a book. You wrote in a book about me. Even before I was born, you numbered my days. So God says before you were even born, he had a book about your life. He fought. He foreknew and he foreplanned your life and my life. So there's the book of Esther, the book of Ruth, the book of Joshua, the book of James, but there's also the book of Francis, there's the book of um, Eddie, there's the book of Andrew, there's the book of Les. There's, he has a book. He has a book of your life and my life. And so, um, so God this for us, he wrote our story, he planned your life, my life, and gave us our purpose even before time began. So he foreknew, he foreplanned. Um, Ephesians 2.10 says that we are his workmanship, that word which he prepared, good works to walk in, which he prepared in advance. It means to measure in advance, like a tailor would measure a suit. And so um, we, and you know, that workmanship is the word poem. We, we are his um, poem. He composed our life as a story. And God has a plan and he wants to make and bring out the beauty of that plan. It also means to weave a garment. And um, so he's going to uh, and has designed our future, who we're called to be before time began. And um, because God foreknew us, he measured and shaped and formed us in a certain way for his plan. Jeremiah says, I've called you from your mother's womb. And um, Paul says, I've been called to be an apostle. So God has written our story in a book. You're, we also get the word from prothesis. We get the word uh, derivative of that is prosthetic. Prosthetic. Pre, and it means a, a limb or a part of us that would be, um, you know, cut off or something. That prosthetic replaces that, but in, a, in an inferior way. But when God replaces something in our life, it turns out much better. It turns out even better. And so out of that one word purpose, he planned for us in love beforehand. He's written a book about our life. And he has also written into that story the replacing of uh, areas in our life that may be affected. So um, I don't know about you, but I've, you know, we can look at our lives and, <clears throat> you know, in the past and think, well, wow, you know, that story looks a bit higgledy-piggledy. And there are things that are in our story. There are chapters that were never written in heaven. And, you know, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author that we sing that song, I know the author of the story and is mine. Amen. But we have a free will. And there's sometimes when we will take the, hand, pen, the pen out of the hand of the author and we begin to change the narrative. Well, I'm just going to go and marry that man. I'm just going to live in that place. I'm just going to change my jobs. I think I'll leave the church and I'll go to somewhere else. And we start to do our own narrative. And, uh, or we're still, while we're writing that chapter and doing our own thing, Satan comes along. And he starts to write a narrative in there. Who knows divorce was never created in heaven? Who, know in, who knows infirmity was never invented in heaven? And then the enemy starts to come and starts to write something in our book. And the narrative changes. So what do you do? 
and uh, so you've got this you've got this book of your life and and uh, and the narratives changed and and Satan has wanted to come in and try and cut off a piece of our future cut off a piece of our destiny take us down the wrong um, track I don't have to come up with a plan God says he's already factored something in there and so when we're looking at our life that is supposed to be a masterpiece you know there are some things that we go through um, in the preparation process and so we know that um, Joseph even though he was um, had an incredible dream and a calling that some things happened and he ended up being sold out by his brothers he had a coat of many colors that was given to him by his father and yet they um, tried to kill him threw him in a pit, stripped off his coat of many colours and uh, told the father that he was dead. And as you know, he got sold as a slave into Egypt and um, <clears throat> there he actually has to um, go through a process. Who knows that sometimes in the midst of the process, it's not home sweet home. It's the place where we're being prepared. And things can happen in our narrative that we're, we're scratching our heads saying, what's wrong with this picture? It wasn't meant to look like this. But God has a plan for our life. And then as he was faithful and he got promoted, then the, um, uh, the, the, uh, then he had a new coat. But then he gets accused of raping Pontifer's wife. And uh, so she accuses him. And as she is, he's fleeing from temptation, fleeing from that woman. She takes his coat. But uh, as he was faithful and kept his heart right and he did whatever his hand could find, he did good. He could have sat back in prison and said, uh, you know, well, look, I've got to, this isn't fair. I'm just going to kick back, watch television, play cards. <laughs> you know, this, I'm just going to fill in the time. No, but the Bible said he did whatever he found his hand to do. He looked after the prisoners so much so that the guard over the prisons gave, gave all the charge to Joseph. So he just continued being, doing whatever would please the Lord until finally Pharaoh had a dream. And, and as uh, we know, uh, Joseph interpreted that dream and he's given a third coat. There's another coat, people. There's another coat of promotion. There's another coat. And as he stood there before Pharaoh and the mantle was put on, the coat was put on him and he stepped into his destiny. So it doesn't matter what's happened in your life. It doesn't matter what, what uh, direction your life may go in, whether it's through your own decisions or whether it's the process of God. He has a way of bringing us out into the purposes of God. Amen. And so it's entrusting him. And um, <clears throat> so what do you do when um, you go through those things? Because the story can never change the story. Only the author and so we put the pen back into the hands of the author, amen. But sometimes when we don't understand that, um, don't understand some chapters that we go through and say this is the book of your life <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you're looking through the chapters and you're seeing, wow, blessing, yes, that's great. Abundance, wow, awesome. Promotion, yay, praise God. And then you see failure, failure. It's not meant to be in my book. Good job, yeah, yeah, friends. What? Barrenness? That's, that's not meant to be in my book. And sometimes we go through things and we don't know where to put it. That, and sometimes we can be even in shock. That was never meant to happen. That was never meant to happen. You know, I know what it's like to go through divorce. <clears throat> that was never meant to happen in my book. What's wrong with this picture? Because when I got saved, I got saved from a background of um, <clears throat> being involved in drugs and all, um, all that life. You know, my <clears throat> I became a single mother at 19. And, and uh, my daughter's first birthday party was a drug party, dope party. Everybody was stoned except her. Uh, if you ever saw me back then, you would have said, would someone rescue that little baby girl from that crazy mother? And I say... Someone rescued both of us, and his name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. 
But there was crazy things. And the, because I was so mixed up, I actually, you know, when you're born again, you're instantly born again. But the Word of God is perfect, converting and changing the soul. So I was still broken in my emotions. I was still insecure. I was still... Um, uh, what would you say? I had what's called the caretaker mentality in a home where there's an alcoholic father and my mum would take a number of overdoses. My dad did too. They survived. And, and so crazy, difficult home. The middle child is often the caretaker one. I'm going to do this. I'm going to fix this. I'll be the strong one. I'll take charge. I'll look after everybody. So I already had that mentality. And when I become a single mother, I got even stronger. I got very strong in my personality. And so... Um, you know, when um, <clears throat> when I got saved, it was like, okay, Jesus, you can sit it out now. I'm going to serve you with all my heart. <laughs> and unless you bond with the Lord, we can actually go into religious serving to earn and deserve what is freely given. Because earning and working for something can look the same as because of his great love. Whatever I find my hand to do, I'll do it. Because of his great love, or rather to, to earn it, to earn it, to earn it. So I was in this earning mode. And, and, so, and so I'm planning and I'm, I'm you know, um, the next thing is I've got to look for a father for my little girl. So um, I used to get a bus to the city and a taxi to West End for church. And to come home from church, I get a bus from West End and wait about an hour because buses on a Sunday only go every hour. Wait an hour to get a bus to Chermside. And so after a period of time when uh, a guy in the church offered me a lift, and uh, that was great, I didn't have to catch buses. <clears throat> and then after a little while, a few weeks, he gave me a big bag of cassettes, and I couldn't afford to order um, cassettes from the church library, like the sale of meetings. And I thought I was in seventh heaven, and I'm saying, Lord, I just need a father for my little girl. When he proposed, you know, a month or two later, I thought, well, tick that box, yay. And uh, you see... I'm making it happen. And I married Dr. Jekyll and I met Mr. Hyde a few months later. See, I figured everybody that came to church did what the pastor said because I was sincere. I, I never, went to, never went anywhere else but to church and to work. I never read anything but the Bible and I didn't watch television for at least 12 months. Just so full on saved. Not when I was in a good goody two-shoes. I just had this incredible salvation and so I figured everybody else felt the same. And so nearly 14 years later and two children, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm divorced. My husband, um, after we separated, moved in with another lady six months later. But I didn't, I didn't like the D word over my life. And people would say, oh, are you divorced? I'd go, no, no, I'm separated. <laughs> Shreds of self-righteousness still. <laughs> I'm, I'm not divorced. And the Lord had a lady come up to me at a meeting and she, she said, you know, I've, I've been through a divorce too. And I heard myself say that, but I heard the stinking sound of self-righteousness. Oh, I'm not like you. Oh, I'm not divorced. And so God allowed some chapters to come that it was like, that's not meant to be in my book. That's not meant to be in my book. And, and maybe it's, maybe, it, you know, you're going through your book and, yep, there's a... a um, Kids getting good grades at school, excellent. Um, prosperity, wonderful, wonderful. And then there's infirmity. In no, infirmity, no, no, no. That wasn't meant to ever be in my book, not infirmity. And then there's another one called rejection. No, not to be in the book. Lost my home, no. Go through the Brisbane floods, no. And we become amazing editors. Because I find there are some things that you just don't know where to put. Because there was a real stronghold of suicide over my family's life. And my sister, um, when she uh, would go through broken relationships, she began to um, take overdoses. And we, we, we were called to the Nambour Hospital after one of those particular overdoses. And uh, she wasn't expected to live. She was on life support. But I was a Christian by this time. And the Lord showed me a picture of a white coffin. And he said, break the lie that this is a good way out. Break the lie that it's a, it's a good answer. And as I sat and I prayed in that hospital room and broke that and people were praying and she came through and, and you know, she got saved and she's wonderfully, you know, married to a great man and, um, you know, uh, all those things. But, you know, I was down in Adelaide when 
And you should, I always turn my phone off when I go to bed. But I, this night I hadn't and I was preaching the next day and I was in a house attached to the manse and um, a, a unit. And the phone rang at midnight. Who knows that a call at midnight's never good. And my daughter was on the phone and uh, I said, the kid's all right. The grandkid's all right. She said, yes, mum. Yeah, yeah. She said, it's, it's Uncle Robbie, my brother, who'd struggled with depression. He knew Jesus. He loved Jesus. But he'd struggled with depression. He'd struggled with um, just, uh, um, just lots of uh, psychotic drugs to help his depression and all that sort of stuff. And um, he had been the one that had stayed with my mother through uh, her later years with um, that depression she had. And uh, when she said, yeah, it's Uncle Robbie. And I didn't know where to put that. That, that phone call should never have happened. I didn't know where to put that. And there are sometimes things we go through. Sometimes tragedy we go through. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he took every one of those chapters to the cross. The Bible says, surely he has borne our sorrows and carried our griefs. And only he can break the power of grief. Only he can break the power of disappointment. Only he can break the power of those deep questions that says, God, if you are so good, why did you let this happen? If you are so good, why did you let this happen? And he's saying, if you'll trust me, if you'll trust me, if you'll trust me and put the chapter back in the book and let me complete that chapter. And he finishes that chapter with the healing of the broken heart. New relationships, where there was a chapter of failure, there's a breaking off of that failure and you start to have good success. Where there's rejection, as we put the pen back in the hand of the author and he begins to finish that chapter with great blessings. We see in the life of Naomi, Naomi, when she came back from Moab, her and her husband and two sons, you know, there's a famine in Bethlehem. I want to say if there's a famine, it's not a good time to check out of the house of God. If you're going through a tough time, do not check out of the house of God. But they left Bethlehem, went down to Moab. And in Moab, for 10 years, the two sons married two Moabitess girls. And in those 10 years, her husband died. Her first son died. Her second son died. And she's returning with Ruth, the only one who did come back with her. And we know know that beautiful story. And as she's coming back, and um, they're... um, they're uh, coming up and saying, Naomi's back. Naomi's back. Because she'd heard that God had visited Bethlehem and the famine was broken. She said, don't call me Naomi, which means pleasant. Call me bitter. Because I've gone out full and I've come back empty. And she's blaming. She's actually, the Lord has brought me back. But you see, she'd made that decision. She'd wrote that, her and her husband, in their chapter. But as she's coming back, and she is a woman who is in grief. She's lost her loved ones. There's no center link back then. The only support was Ruth gleaning a fruit picker in a field out there um, working in the noonday sun. And she's a poor widow now with no children and no support. And yet, as we know, because of the faithfulness and the journey of Ruth and Ruth meeting Boaz and, and then Ruth um, falling pregnant after marriage. And uh, the Bible says as Obed was born the beginning of the lineage of Christ in the earth. They came, they got uh, Naomi was living with them and they asked Naomi to raise the boy with them. And they the people around the village were saying Naomi has a son. No, wasn't it Ruth? No. Naomi has a son. God knows what will heal your heart. And as she raised that little boy, all the grief and all the disappointment went as she her heart was filled. God knows how to heal your heart. Amen. God knows how to restore that area of your life. God knows how to finish that chapter. But he wants us to trust him. Put the pen back in his hand. I know when I walked out of a doctor's office saying I can't even pronounce that. A neurological situation. I had to go and see a neurologist. But as I walked out of a doctor's office and, and uh, certain parts of my body were um, breaking down, um, 
and uh, affected certain areas and my eyes wouldn't stay open and in the end one eye closed and I was wearing a patch and you know actually my 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 crazy brother actually got me a black patch and a stuffed parrot on Christmas. <laughs> we have a weird sense of family, of humour in our family, no compassion, just listen. what fun can we make out of this? But I know what it's like to, to lie in bed at night going, um, you know, my muscles and my breathing properly. You know, to walk out of a doctor's office, they say there's no cure. There's no cure. You have to go on this uh, sort of strong medication. I know what it's like to lie in bed going, you know, um, just keep me alive till my kids are all walking with you, Lord. Just um, thinking, well, you know, I better plan my funeral. Don't want to leave it up to chance. I don't want that. I don't want that person to do my funeral. Better make sure I get to the right person. And I hope they sing songs that make everybody cry. I want good songs. And I hope my husband doesn't remarry in the first 12 months. It's not a good look. And you go through all this crazy. And I better put aside, you know, this special ring for this daughter. And, and you know, um, those, those chapters don't, they're not meant to be in my book. That was a, I never thought I'd hear those words. But I want you to know, every time I went to that neurologist, I took a book about Christ, testimony, Christian doctors, share the gospel. And he used to kind of like be puzzled. He'd go, what do you do again? What are these talks about? So I never would say, oh, you know, I'm a pastor. Oh, I just teach on faith, how to have hope in the world. Oh, and, he, and then I'd tell him my testimony. And he, he would write notes each time and then I have to go, go through all these tests. But I want you to know that, you know, they can't say heal, but they do say remission. And I'm totally healed. I'm not on any medication. In fact, sadly, my neurologist died, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. I don't even see a neurologist now. Um, and uh, God is a healer. Amen. The, he finished that chapter while I was lying in bed. You see, my, my eye muscles were breaking down and the other eye started to close. So I'm driving like this. You wouldn't want to be on the road. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if, I, if I sat next to, if I was talking to someone, it'd be like this because my eyelids wouldn't open. Or if I, when my one eye was just playing up, I'd sit, sit in a talking to someone, I make sure I was on, they were on the si side of my good eye because the other one wasn't opening hardly at all. And you think, will I ever feel better? Will I ever, you know, hallelujah, praise God. Amen, high five Jesus. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. But I'm here to say, on the other side of rejection is new relationships. On the other side of barrenness is fruitfulness. On the other side of tragedy is a healed heart. I know one day I'll see that brother again. For years, I couldn't even go past his turn off. I had to put away his photos. But I want you to know now, I'm just looking forward to seeing him again because he loves Jesus. He used to pray for me. In fact, sometimes if I'm in a plane and I feel I should uh, witness because that's what you do. <laughs> and inside I say, Robbie, this, this, this one's for you. This one's for you. You didn't get to fulfill all your life so I've got an inheritance of souls that you would have led to the Lord this one's for you Robbie and I know I'll see him again but God's healed my heart on the other side of grief is Jesus the friend that sticks closer than a brother and I'm here to ask you to put the pen back in the hand of the author there's a um, there's a palace in Tehran a royal palace and the architect specified uh, huge sheets of mirrors for the walls. It was an amazing palace that was being built. And when the first shipment arrived from Paris, the mirrors actually were broken. The contractor threw the pieces in the trash and rubbish and he brought the sad news to the architect who said, collect all the broken pieces, smash them into tiny pieces and a mosaic of silvery shimmering pieces of glass flashing like diamonds the broken become more beautiful. The broken become expert at mending. And God will beautify the meek with salvation as we give him back the pen. Amen. He wants to put a prosthetic. He wants to add something even far greater to your life and my life. Amen. And so it's known around the world, this mosaic. And God wants to make a mosaic out of your life. And so I'm here to ask you, what's the chapter? What's it, you know, we don't actually tear it out, but we just, I don't want to think about that. 
I'm just going to think about that. But when we don't process it, it stays alive inside of us. But when we can go to the Lord and say, into your hands I commit this tragedy, my broken heart, Lord, my child that's been going through a struggle, I, into your hands I commit this person. And I trust, I trust you, Lord, to give back something far greater. In the divine exchange, in the trading floor of heaven, it's still beauty for ashes. The currency is still ashes. Amen. Do you have any ashes today? Do you have any chapters today? I had a number of them. That because uh, sometimes you know some of us may enter heaven with um, such a such an editing that we've just got two covers and a few odd chapters. But as we allow God and go to put that chapter back in. Can we just stand now and can I have the musicians come? We've got a few minutes left. Thank you, Lord. If you've got a chapter today, we're going to invite Jesus into that chapter. We're going to see the power of Calvary affect that chapter. And God's going to give you back something far greater. The Lord spoke to me a number of years ago. Yeah, guys, that would be great. And... Um, and he, and he said, um, I have a double indemnity clause for every person's destiny. Double indemnity. It's in Isaiah uh, 61 verse 7. For your former pain, shame and disgrace, whether any tr enemy tried to disgrace you, shame you and maim you. He said, I have a twofold recompense. Therefore, in your land, you will receive double. And all who see you in your prosperity will know the hand of the Lord has done this. That tense is ongoing, present tense doubling. Ongoing, present tense doubling. And double indemnity in an insurance policy is when us under certain conditions of injustice, um, under certain conditions, uh, you know, um, I think if, if where a train is involved or something, and you might say, well, look, that just felt like a train wreck for me. But God's word, he said, I've underwritten all your losses. I've underwritten every chapter. I've underwritten everything that the enemy may mean for evil. I'm, I've, I've underwritten it with good. And sometimes because of the shock of the contradiction, there's a, there's a scripture that says, if the devil had known the plan of God and what it would produce, he never would have crucified the Lord of glory. There's, there's a principle, if the devil had known, he never would have. If the devil had known, he never would have. But it's like, okay, God, I know now how the healing power of God works. I'm excited about healing. I know that you heal the brokenhearted. I'm excited about seeing people get healed of the broken heart. I know, God, that you break the spirit of poverty and release prosperity over our lives. So I'm going after every person that needs deliverance from a spirit of poverty. If the devil had known, he never would have. But in some circumstances, you do feel like a lamb led to the slaughter. Jesus, I met him at your house, I said. I wasn't in any nightclub. I wasn't going anywhere but to church. I met him at your place. What's wrong with this picture? Like a lamb led to the slaughter. And yet God in his knowledge could have stopped it, but in his wisdom he allowed it because he knew I was so broken, the potential to make a wrong decision was 95% for sure and he will never violate your free will. But God used it all for good. God used it all for good. And so I have two beautiful children and a journey of digging a well in God that I would have not been able to dig. Now did... God did not plan that marriage. God did not plan that divorce. But as we put our pen back into the hands of the author and he begins to write a narrative of blessing, of redemption, of restoration, of double indemnity, double for your trouble. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If we could just sing a, a song and then we're just going to take a few minutes to respond. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Father. Yes, there's none like you. None like you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. This morning, if there's a chapter, I had, I had a number of chapters. And God wants to take you forward. He wants us to move forward. I've found sometimes with things that your spirit goes into shock. They say as a surgeon does an operation, sometimes they have to restart organs because it traumatizes organs to have an operation. Sometimes our heart, sometimes internally, we have arrested development because we don't know what to do with that. And we didn't think that God would allow that. But I want you to know, God is going to restore in a greater way. And as we just sing this song, I want you just to come forward if that's you. You have a chapter? Come on out now. Thank you, Lord. Water you turned into wine. There's no one like you. Let's sing it. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Thank you, Lord. Let's go back to verse Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyone before we just... Uh, Move on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God, yeah, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God, our God. for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Our God 
is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, yeah, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, yeah, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, he's awesome in power, our God. Our God. There's no one like you, no one above you. There's no one like you. Jesus, Jesus, Lord, you are faithful till the end. Trust in you, Lord, trust in you, Lord. No one like you, Jesus. So there is no one like you, Lord. We believe in your promises. We believe in your promises to us. We believe in your promises to us. We believe in your promises. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Let's stop strumming again. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 
God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, yeah. our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, yeah. our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Oh, what could stand against us? lift our hands this morning. Father God, I thank you today as you've been healing our hearts, if you've been cleansing the womb of our spirit, you've been washing away the pain of the past, the questions, the wrong questions, why me and why? And I thank you, Lord, that our hearts are now becoming incubations of the dreams that you have for us. Lord, I thank you for new dreams coming into people's hearts. And God says, you're going to dream the dream I have for you. The dream I have for you is far greater than anything you could ask, imagine, or even think. So turn your faith loose and know that I am releasing a fresh vision, a fresh dream, and a fresh expectation. And know this, your expectation will not be cut off. For I've gone before you to make the crooked places straight. And I'm the God of yesterday, today, and forever. So I'm bringing a great healing. I'm bringing a great releasing over your lives. For this day forward, the enemy will not have you look back in sorrow, but you will look up and live and look up and see your Redeemer draws near to you. And I'm drawing near to you with even a new dream, a dream of great expectation, says God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a round of applause, hey? Come on. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Hey, folks, we're going we're gonna to have a break. Um, tea and coffee is available. And we've set up some marquees out there. Pete, I was wondering if you could get um, just a couple of blokes, give you a hand just to set up some chairs. 